promoter and the applications of Stepper model using H385 microprocessor. So in this presentation, we talk about uh, six different things: the definition and how the microprocessor, how the Stepper motor works, the how it works via an open loop control system, the different modes of operation of a Stepper motor. Interfacing the stepper motor using a 385 microprocessor and finally the advantages, disadvantages and the applications of a stepper motor. So first we have how, what exactly is a stepper motor. A stepper motor is nothing but a brushless DC electric motor device that divides the full rotation of the rotor into equal number of steps. Now what this does is that the motor's position can be commanded very easily to move and hold at a particular position without any position sensor for feedback. So there is no feedback control whatsoever, which means that the output is not depending on the input control. This is actually advantages from an application point of view because we use an open loop control system here and that is much cheaper actually. So it is good from an application point of view. Often used as output devices for microprocessor based control system as well. Next, we have, so also uh, a mic, uh, stepper motor is made up of rotors. In this case, we have uh, one rotor and four stators. Stators are nothing but electromagnets which get activated from time to time so that the rotor can move. So next, we have an open loop control. So this is the way via which a microprocessor can interact with the motor and helps help the motor move. So a software based open control open loop control system is there, and secondly, there is a hardware based as well. So in software based what happens is the microprocessor is directly interacting with the motor in the sense that it produces the phase control signals as well as the timing and sequencing of the signals of the motor. So it is directly uh, interacting with the motor. Next we have a hardware based open loop control. In this what happens is that there is an intermediate hardware controller device and the microprocessor what that does is it only faces the target position and the start command to the motor. That's all it does. Hardware, on the other hand, generates phase control signals for the motor to follow. After completion, the hardware sends the finished command back to the microprocessor. <clears throat> and that's how we know the motor has finished working. So, a hardware controller is an intermediate device used in this case. Um, next, we have different modes of operation of a stepper motor. First, we have single coil excitation or wave drive method. So, as we can see over here, this is how it moves with, with, with this method and this is the electric square pulse which is being the square pulse in the form of a current which is supplied to the electromagnet so what this does is that only one coil or in other words electromagnet is activated at a time for example in this case four state for four stators the rotor makes one rotation in four steps and in this case less torque is required secondly we have full step drive in full step drive mode two coils get activated at a time same resolution is obtained as before however one advantage is that more torque is there in this method so next we have half step drive now half step drive is actually a combination of the previous two modes uh, in this what happens is that one coil gets active at a time followed by two coils getting active as we can see in this diagram in first b dash is getting activated and then b dash and a is getting activated and this just keeps going on so on so full cycle in this case has been uh, completed in 8 steps and we obtained double the resolution as before. Micro stepping, however micro stepping is actually the most common method and it is the best for uh, an application point of view. Why? Because instead of giving a square pulse, we are giving a continuous sine wave to the electromagnet of the microprocessor which causes there to be a variable current going through the electromagnet and this in turn causes the um, rotor to move very smoothly and without in, with an increased angular resolution and a decrease in stress in the parts of the stepper motor. So this works the absolute best and is uh, also optimum from an application point of view. Next we have interfacing using a 385 microprocessor. How the microprocessor interfaces uh, gives commands to the, uh, uh, to the stepper motor and hence uh, it uh, activates or it rotates. So the first two codes of this particular uh, interfacing with the uh, program is MVI80 and OUT03. What this does is that it initializes all the ports as the output port and what this also does is that it, these two steps, they connect the, they, uh, to connect the, they connect the microprocessor with the uh, stepper motor. So finally, we have interfaced the stepper motor with the microprocessor via these two steps. Next, our actual program starts. Now, uh, we have over here, we are loading in all these four steps, as you can see, we are loading certain hexadecimal values into accumulator. These hexadecimal values, when converted into binary, simply represent the square pulse wave that is being sent to the electromagnet 
to cause a uh, sequencing in the stepper motor to cause uh, the stepper motor to move so as we are giving four instructions to it it is going to rotate for, uh, it is going to rotate uh, it is going to do a full one rotation in four steps so uh, we can start it and the next statement is out zero zero which means that we are now feeding the electromagnet uh, we are feeding the input of the electromagnet into the output which causes the rotor to move Next, we have call 2030. This brings the control statement to 2030. This actually is responsible. This segment of code is responsible for creating a delay between the two uh, uh, consecutive steps in the uh, stepper motor. So, LXID 0000. What this does is that it uh, loads this particular value into the DE register pair. Next, we have call 03BC. What call 03BC does is that it decrements the contents of the DE register pair. Uh, all the way to zero that represents the delay cost between two consecutive steps this delay could go from 00 to 05 or even ff so for example let's say instead of 00 it is 05 so the moment we call 03 bc what it's going to do is that it's going to decrement the value 05 all the way to zero so we have a certain uh, delay created so that's uh, in this case obviously there is absolutely no delay created because we've already fit the lowest value possible Finally, this is executed and the control uh, and then return statement is executed with which the control statement goes back to where it was last called from, from this. And then this just keeps going on. We go to jump 2004, which causes the control statement to go, uh, control, uh, to, go to the 2004 address. And this just keeps on moving. In other words, um, the rotor keeps on moving until we ask the program, ask the program to stop. So, uh, also one more thing, we know how we can delay, we can cause delay in the stepper motor. You must also know how we can change the direction of the uh, rotor. So, all we can do by cha for changing the direction is by changing the sequence of the, uh, these uh, regular decimal codes that we have input. It's simple as that. Next, we have switching sequence. Now, this is going to tell us about how, what goes on inside the stepper motor, how the electromagnet works. So all we're doing is that we're simply, there are four switches which are connected to the electromagnet, which is nothing but the stator. Uh, we are giving it a sequence of currents. So this is on, this is off, this is on, and this is off. So what is going to happen in that case, if switch one is on and this is the battery, then this is going to uh, cause an anti-clockwise movement of current in this particular electromagnet. Switch two is off. So it is going to cause a clockwise movement in the in this particular electromagnet. Sim similarly, uh, movements different movements will be created in these two switches as well as we know according to Lem, uh, fleming's left hand rule if there is a change in current in these inductors then there is going to be a polarity created there's going to be a, mag uh, a magnetic polarity created in these electromagnet that polarity is what drives the rotors to move so this is how the rotors are going to move we can also represent it in form of a pictorial diagram this is the stepper motor and how it moves so if this is activated this is not so obviously a rotor is going to try to get into the most stable position the south of this rotor is going try uh, is trying to attract itself to the north so this is the most stable position over here this south is trying to be in a position where it can repel itself from both these south poles so over here this is the most stable position the rotor will try to move in the most stable position that is what causes the rotor to move also the rotor is made up of it is a permanent magnet where all the rest of these are electromagnets which uh, the polarity of which can be changed in the next sequence the north converts to south and over here all the sequence completely changes which causes the rotor to move how does it move earlier it was over here but because this is south now and this was already south it tries to repel from this electromagnet and similarly same thing is obtained in the rest of the four so then we have advantages and disadvantages of a stepper motor one is flexibility of the stepper motor constant holding torque is there without the need to, for the motor to be powered so that is a very good advantage next it it can uh, have low uh, excellent low speed torque low, uh, high torque at a very low speed so we can lift heavy lo a lot of loads using a stepper motor next it is overload safe it is not going to uh, the the stepper motor is going to be fine even if we put a lot of uh, load on it next good choice for application requiring low speed with high precision and cheaper than servo motors it is much cheaper than servo motors because we use an open loop control system disadvantages draw substantial power very low efficiency it is very noisy and there is no feedback is used to indicate potential misters because we use an open loop control system there is no feedback whatsoever so there is no indication that uh, some steps could have been missed lastly we have applications of stepper motor mm. 
there are many applications some of which are xy plotter it can very uh, easily and very precisely uh, it can plot on an xy uh, axis it is also used in robotics for example we have to move a robotic arm from one angle by uh, to the another in a very precise angle stepper motors can be used as we know because as we know they are very precise nextly printers to etch ink printers all kinds of printers 2d printers or 3d printers we can use a uh, stepper motor to etch the ink or to etch a design or whatever it is because of its very precise and short movements it can also be used for surveillance because it is an open loop control system it is much cheaper and uh, it can it is important from a commercial point of view also and lastly it can also be used in wrist watches so as to move the angle from one place to another very precisely so that is all there is for the presentation thank you